Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Reed Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, where we strive to be Bible reading, Bible teaching, God glorifying, Christ centered, Holy Spirit filled, and disciple making Christians. In spite of all that our world has seen in the past week, we still declare that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you for joining in with us today. And remember, if you pray, don't worry. If you worry, don't pray.
us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us safe this far. God, we come this morning just giving you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We come, God, right now in the name of Jesus, thanking you for allowing us to slumber, rest, and sleep. And we thank you, God, for the gift of a new day and new life, for allowing us to wake up this morning and start us on our way. We come, God, right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that in spite of all that our nation is experiencing, in spite of all of the injustices that we are experiencing, that you are still the savior of the world, that you are still the bomb in Gilead that can save a sin-sick soul. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that if there are any amongst us who are sick, that you would just heal us and comfort us and deliver us, God, right now, in the name of Jesus. We come lifting up our young people, those who have gone back to college and those who have gone back to high school and middle school and elementary school, God. We ask, oh Lord, that you protect our young people as they interact with others, God. We come declaring right now, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that we need your presence, your power, and your promises. We come, God, in the name of Jesus, asking that you would just heal this land. God, we come right now recognizing that there are just so many things pressing on us from the left and to the right and from the front and to the back. But God, we have heard in your word where it says, be still and know that you are God. So God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would just simply have your way, have your way in this place this morning. We ask, oh Lord, that you will bless all that will be seen and done right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless every song to be sung, every prayer prayed, every scripture to be read, and the word that will go forth. God, God, we are careful this morning to recognize that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We would like to call your attention to Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. Carry each of his burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something special, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then they can take pride in himself without comparing themselves to somebody else. For each one should carry another's burdens. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what they sow. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from, the, from, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for, all, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family or the household of faith. We've read Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. These words are true, and they can be trusted. Good morning, Reed Chapel. It's giving time. Do you know that our Heavenly Father gives to us absolutely every day? He gives us new life, new hope, new experiences, new opportunities. He allows us to meet new people. He allows us to see a brand new sunshine. He allows so many wonderful things in our life. But the God that we serve is a giving God. He gives God gives and God gives and God gives and then God gives some more and then God continues to give. And all God requires from us is a relationship with him. And in that relationship, God wants to know that everything we do, we're going to bring glory to God. God is a giving God and he requires that we also be givers. We are to give to our brothers and sisters. We are to give to our family members. We are to give to the common good for good causes. We are supposed to be givers. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. What are we supposed to give? God wants our time, our talent, and our treasure. God says, I'm going to give you 100% of something so you can enjoy it. But I, God just requires 10%, which is a small portion. God wants 10% of our time, God wants 10% of our talent, and God wants 10% of our treasure. And we still have 90% to do whatever we want to do with it. God uh, has set it up that we just give a small portion back to God. And so this morning, pray with us as we give God our tithe and our offerings. Let us pray. God in whom we live, move, and have our being, the God who is always working on humans behalf 
uh, the God who keeps on giving, the God who gives new life and new hope and new energy and new possibilities. God, we thank you for the newness of life. We thank you for the, the newness of this brand new day. God, we just simply say thank you. God, as we prepare our offerings, we ask that you will receive a small portion which already belongs to you. God, we give it to you not because you demand it or desire it, but because we love you and we want to help build the kingdom of God where we are planted. We ask, oh God, that you will accept our gifts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen.
hearing earlier Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 10 we want to lift up verse 9 Galatians uh, chapter 6 verse 9 from the New King James Version and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart and let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season we shall we shall reap if we faint not we want to use these words don't get weary. Don't get weary. The preacher is like an artist, a poet, a novelist, a singer, or dancer. When it comes to the exposition of scriptures, we are to make a biblical text come alive with modern understanding, with practical application, which will help us all follow God 
and become more like Christ. The preaching of the gospel takes a lot of hard work, a dedicated prayer life, and inspiration from everyday scriptures. To mount the pulpit on Sunday and preach also means that we as preachers need to have the word in our hearts and have heard from God. In order for the sermon to go forth, one must be inspired. The good times and bad times of life collide with the inspiration coming from the Holy Spirit and Bible. There are many things that can inspire any preacher to preach. A song, an experience, a good book, a poem, a novel, a magazine article, or a current event, or the Bible. But one of the most disturbing things is to experience an horrific event that shakes you up and that shakes everybody else up. Today we mount the, we mount the pulpit a few days after another black male was shot, was shot in the back trying to get away from police while his children was in the back seat of the car. It seems like in the past 10 years, every couple of months, we are mounting the pulpit with heavy hearts, hoping to preach what thus saith the Lord in the wake of law enforcement, bullets, a dead or injured black body, and peculiar circumstances. The deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, Stephon Clark, Botham John, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Michelle Cazeau, Freddie Gray, Tanisha Fonville, Eric Gardner, Akai Gurley, Gabriela Navarez, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Tanisha Anderson, and Walter, and Walter Scott, and many others are not acts of inspiration, but, but another weight tied to our neck as we stand here today. In times like these, people across the land are saying things like, where is the hope? To tell you the truth, the words of Fannie Lou Hammer are ringing aloud right now. Clear as day, as she said in the 1960s, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Not only am I tired and not only are you tired, but athletes who are paid millions of dollars who can easily put blinders on and not pay attention to the harsh injustices of our world, uh, they are now taking a stand. The, the, the Milwaukee Bucks refused to leave the, the dressing room for NBA Finals game in response to Jacob Blake's shooting. The NBA players met and the Los Angeles Clippers and the LA Lakers were the only two teams on Wednesday who walked out voting to end the NBA season. It seems like when it comes to police violence, the NBA is not just going to dribble and play basketball. The WNBA and Major League Baseball and even soccer is following the NBA. There is a problem in our nation, and it has been eating at the soul of this experiment called, the, called democracy even before democracy began. It started eating at us in 1619. It started eating at this nation during the transatlantic slave trade and American chattel slavery and a free labor class supplied by, by black Africans. This issue has haunted us, and while some say blacks should get over slavery, the reality is the aftermath of slavery is holding our nation back. Before it, anyone can move forward in our community or state or nation, our nation needs to deal with the exploitative and oppressive past of its ancestors. Slavery was the original sin of America, and it produced racism, racial hatred, institutional racism, and the list goes on and on. Seven shots were excessive, but this time Jacob's, Jacob Blake's life right now has been spared. It's okay to be sick and tired, but it's not okay to be sick and tired and do nothing. All of us need to be involved in an organization or ministry that is trying to rid the world of the isms that plague us. We need to be part of an organization that holds people and systems of power accountable for the injustices that are allowed. If you are not actively pursuing justice, you are part of the problem. You are just as much as part of the problem as the actors who spew hate speech and oppress people who do not look like them. Now is the time to be involved in an organization whose mission is to do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly before thy God. Our biblical mandate as a church and as the body of Christ is to go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But for too long, people have taken this mission statement of the church as solely an evangelistic enterprise. All Christians who believe in Christ and focus on the goodness of salvation, which is simply divine deliverance of sin uh, through Jesus Christ, are called evangelicals. But we, have fooled, but we have been fooled into thinking that 
evangelicals are white conservative Christians who vote Republican. To spread the gospel is also to build the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's reign on earth. To build the kingdom of God is to build a kingdom, a society, and a, a community where all are treated as if they were in the image and likeness of God. When we build a kingdom of God, we are building, we are building a kingdom free of hatred. We are building a, a kingdom free of envy and competitiveness and evil. When we build the kingdom of God, God's rules and regulations guide us and direct us. And so our biblical mandate is to go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but also our biblical mandate is what Micah 6, 8 says, he has showed thee, O man, what is good. What does the Lord require of thee but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before thy God? So we are called to build the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is God's reign on this earth. We are to love the Lord with all, of, with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And we are called to love thy neighbor as thyself. So we are to spread the gospel. We are, the, we are to build the kingdom of God. We are to pursue justice and treat our neighbors as ourselves. God asks us to do some strange and some difficult things. They are strange because God asks us to do some things that, that are in our nature, but also against our nature. We are to treat people like we treat ourselves but we treat ourselves better than we treat other people. God wants us to treat people like we treat ourselves. That's a tall order, but if we did that, we might not see all of this violence and discrimination in our society. There has to be a better way to live our lives. And if we all strive to build the kingdom of God, we will have already pursued justice love mercy and walk humbly before thy God. We would have already have spread the gospel and treat each other like we want to be treated. And so this morning, if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, that means you want something different, but you also have to do something different. The something different, that's where the hope comes in. The something different is the idea that living a different way will produce a better outcome than the one we are experiencing right now. And so when the Apostle Paul uh, writes this letter to the, uh, to the Galatian church, he is trying to encourage them to live differently and to live in the opposite direction in which they had already been living. When Paul writes, writes this letter, he is taking the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is under attack. They were teaching that a person was saved by faith and by works. They were teaching that a person had to go through the ritual of circumcision and had to obey all of the Hebraic laws and ceremonies. But Paul taught that you can be saved through your faith and not by your works. Paul taught that a human can be saved by the grace of God. Paul is dealing with people who feel that you have to obey the law, but Paul was concerned about the spirit and the heart of an individual. We have racial hatred and discrimination because people's hearts and spirits have not been touched by uh, the redemptive power of God. Paul had visited several of the churches in Galatia to preach the gospel. He goes to Iconium, he goes to Lystra, he goes to Dirt, he goes, he goes to Derby, he goes to Antioch. But during his first and, first and third missionary journeys, he visits all of these cities. Paul wrote to each of them the basic doctrine of the church, that we are saved by our faith, uh, that there is salvation by grace. And so in Galatians 6, the writer shifts the direction of the letter and begins to encourage the Galatians to live faithfully to God. All of us in these troubled times need to be encouraged to look to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Paul, in Galatians 6, he's also talking to teachers. If the world doesn't know now, uh, we know since March 2020 that teachers are very important. Every parent, every grandparent, every older sibling should be thanking God for teachers and school administrators and staff and all of our schools. It's the teacher who trains the next generation. It's the teacher who teaches children how to read and in some instances even how to think. Now that most schools are going virtual, people are now beginning to appreciate all of the hard work and all of the sacrifices that teachers make on a daily basis. The teacher is an educator, a psychologist, a therapist, a parent, and a disciplinarian all wrapped in one. 
Paul is talking about the teachers in the church, but we can apply this text to all of our teachers. The first few verses in Galatians 6, Paul asked the Galatians to bear one another's burdens. Certainly in this pandemic, we need our brothers and our sisters and family members and friends uh, to, help, to, to lean on in these difficult times. Paul lets us know in the first few verses of Galatians chapter 6, the human beings we are always, uh, we are always going after and we're left and we're lusting after acceptance and recognition that we are lusting after position and honor and compos and compensation and approval. We are, we are lusting after prestige and privilege and power and money. But Paul says that wanting too much of those things can be bad. He also tells the reader that we are responsible for our actions. But when he gets to Galatians chapter 6, in verse 9, he is telling the believers how to treat their teachers and how to be a better student or disciple. He says in verse 6, those who are taught the word should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Then he says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their, their own selfish desires will harvest decay and death from their sinful natures. But those who live to please the spirit will harvest everlasting life. When we teach or build the kingdom of God, we must build following the direction of the Holy Spirit. If we build trying to please ourselves, we will reap, and de we will reap decay and destruction. When we build trying to please God and are led by the Spirit, we will harvest everlasting life. Then Paul says in verse 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in good season, for in due season we shall reap uh, if we faint not. Here he is encouraging the teachers of the faith to work hard and in due season the Lord will allow them to reap their harvest. Whatever we do, if we do it to the glory of God and are led by the Spirit and are sincere, God will take care of us. So this morning for all of the teachers going back to school virtually and in person, do not be weary in well-doing for in due season uh, you shall, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. For all the political candidates who are running for election or re-election in November, be not weary in well-doing. For the parent who has, a who has to raise a child on half of their salary from last year, be not weary in well-doing. For, uh, for, the, for the police officer who is trying not to be a part of a systemic problem Problems and in his police department, do not be weary in well-doing. For the church member or Sunday school teacher or for the officer in the church, uh, do not be weary in well-doing. For the, for the musician who does not have a choir, uh, do not be weary in well-doing. For the preacher who is preaching to empty pews and a camera, do not be weary in well-doing. Uh, to the NAACP, uh, to the Urban League, uh, to the Appleseed Project, to all of our ministerial alliance, to the Christian Action Council, uh, to the 34 congregations of more justice. Do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. For everyone who is trying to provide for their family, for everyone who is trying to put food on their table and clothes on their back and shelter over their head, I stop by to tell you this morning, do not be weary in well-doing. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help, your help comes from the Lord. I stop by to tell you this morning, don't give up. Uh, do not be weary in well-doing. Rise, shine, and give God the glory. Rise, shine, and give God the glory. I know we get tired sometimes. I know we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know we think this stuff is never going to end, uh, but don't give up. Uh, don't give up. Uh, don't give up because God is on your side. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God saved us so we can make it. God delivered us so we can make it to the next level. God healed us because God has work for us to do. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. I stop by to tell somebody, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will.
he'll take care of you beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you no weapon formed against you shall ever be able to prosper God will make a way out of no way yes he will I know he will yes he will I know he will because this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad rise shine and give God the glory rise shine and give God the glory rise shine and give God the glory he's worthy yes he is he's worthy he's worthy to be praised don't be weary don't give up don't give up because God is going to take us to the next level God is great and greatly to be praised. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But in the midst of God being who God is, we go through, we go through so many things on this earth. We go through trials. We go through tribulations. We are tested daily. And it feels like sometimes that God is not present. But I want you to know God is always present. There may be someone this morning who does not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins. There may be someone who feels like giving up and feels like there is absolutely no hope. There is always hope, and his name is Jesus. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every problem shall bow, every sickness shall bow, every disease shall bow, every stronghold shall bow. 
at the name of Jesus and declare that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so if you have never publicly professed that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you are unsaved. If you desire salvation this morning, pray the prayer of salvation with us. Gracious God, I come this morning recognizing that I have tried to live separate from you. I come, God, right now in the name of Jesus, saying that I have sinned against your wisdom, your way, your truth, and your life. But God, I come today, God, knowing that I need you on my side. God, I come declaring that I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ has been raised from the dead. God, I know now that I am saved. Thank you, God, for saving me. God, I come this morning knowing that now that I am saved, that I will still have problems, I still have concerns, and I'll still have issues. But I can make them through because I'm with you. Amen. Our second call today, there may be someone who already knows Jesus in the pardoning of their sins, uh, but does not have a church home. If you desire to make Reed Chapel your church home, we invite you this morning. We are a church that knows that we are imperfect people who serve a perfect God. If you desire to make Reed Chapel your church home, call us at 803-786-0701 or email us at office at reedchapel.org. We would love for you to be a part of this journey of faith that we call life. To God be the glory. To what his plans are. Let the to what his word says. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And now and forever, amen.